Hello, so um, thanks to Vladimir and Hype for getting me some info about this. This is a Sovia RMG3, if I remember its name right. Um, basically, scintillation counter, or scintillator. So it's got this massive wand that isn't all that efficient, but that might be due to age or damaged parts or something. Um, so there's a little label on it. So I've shown this on the stream. I'm afraid I can't demonstrate too much of it in this video. Simply for the fact that, as said, it's not that sensitive anymore, so I will demonstrate it working. And what I wanted to do is do this video initially, therefore if I take it apart to try and repair it and something breaks and then I can't get it going at all, you've at least seen it somewhat functioning. So, basically there aren't many controls to it. It takes six C-cell batteries in the bottom that go in there, that's that. Then there's your zero button there. That's pretty straightforward, a bit like with the Geiger counters. There's a speaker there, although it also has a headphone input. So I'm not sure if the headphones cancel the speaker, or if it's a case of the speakers for the alarm, the headphones are for ticking or something. So here's your controls. You've got a switch here. So you put that on zero, and you might actually be able to see there the needle has moved. Let's zoom the camera in a bit more. And you might be able to see there, yeah, look, the needle has actually moved. So it's basically in the battery test region, so that bit works. So then you've got your scales. Now I figured out 7 is the most sensitive, so let's dial this all the way up to 7. There we go. Um, now on this scale, it's the opposite way around. The lower the scale is set, the more sensitive this is. So if we go all the way to whatever this goes up to, 9, that will basically the needle won't move. I assume that's resistance, it looks a bit like an ohm symbol there. So basically I was reading an online forum thing Vladimir found about this, but again, Free Google Translate, it didn't explain everything, but it was interesting enough. So, basically, with that set to 7, and this one's set to basically 0 or just under 0, depending on how the dial lines are with the numbers, this actually does something. So let's demonstrate it, although it's not as sensitive as it should be, as said, because scintillation counters are designed so you can pick up radiation from really far away. Um, this one <laughs> certainly doesn't do that at the moment. So anyway, let's zoom this out. Um, it's less sensitive than the Geiger counter, just to point that out. Um, and then I'm going to bring some Autonite over to the um, actual probe. And you can see the needle's gone up there, look. So, wow, look at that. It's gone up to about 7 or 8 on, on its scale. Now, what's the most sensitive area of this probe? That's what I'd like to figure out. Is it... It's a bit higher there, because I've put the Autonite even closer. But bear in mind, if this was on the Geiger Muller counter, that would be much higher. Um... I'm just trying to figure out, so the tip of the probe is definitely more sensitive, but where is the most sensitive section? Probably around here, that's probably where the photo multiplier is. Um, oh, it's even more sensitive there, look. Less sensitive there. Oh, I made it do something. Ah, cool, look, it's actually functioning now. So. Yeah, so as you can see, this is a, um, I assume that's telling you to go up to the next scale if it kept doing that. But as I said, it's not as sensitive as it should be. So what I'm just going to do quickly is flick this off, and then we'll open up the probe, and you can have a quick look at what is in the probe. So, it's pretty straightforward, but as I said, I've, I've not taken the probe fully apart yet, because of the fact that it's quite, um, you know fragile feeling compared to a lot of Soviet gear. So if we unscrew all that, then we should be able to pull, pull this out. So you can see here, look, there's and there's nothing else in the probe. That's an empty sort of metal pole now. So I think the photo multiplier from forum pictures I could see is basically in that bit, like the little crystal section. That sits there, um, under there. But again, you can't really see much in there until I take it all apart. Maybe the crystal's missing or whatever. That would be explained why it wouldn't be very sensitive. But anyway, um, or would it just not function at all without a crystal? I don't know, actually. Um, but basically, yeah, there's there's some of the electronics. If you have, This bit is where the photo multiplier is, and the crystal basically sits right at the end. So that's how this big wand works, obviously. As said, compared to... I can actually show you, um, because I've got some more scintillators. Um, General scintillator probe would look like this. Ooh, if I get it in frame, that might help. I hope this this was actually in frame when I was waving it all around. But yeah, essentially, this bit here is this bit here with this one, except for this is a fatter, shorter one. And then the crystal would sit on the end of here, sort of like the crystal sits there. Um, 
So that's how the scintillator probes function. I managed to get um, two of these for about £10 each, 20 quid. So that was really good actually recently from another British sort of medical thing selling off a load of stuff. But um, anyway, there's your old Soviet scintillator. As I said, I wanted to do the video before I take anything apart because of the fact that it'd be really annoying if it just didn't function at all um, after I did something with it. But hopefully it is just a case of maybe the crystal needs replacing in there. Maybe there's just a single part that needs replacing because it does seem to function. It's just nowhere near as sensitive as it should be. So as I said, for those of you that don't know, scintillators are designed to be really, really, really sensitive to radiation as opposed to sort of Geiger counters, which are your jack of all trades thing, and then, um, you know, ionization chambers, which generally, not always, generally are more in survey meter kind of range for um, detecting doomsday levels of radiation. But again, that's a generalization because you could get an insensitive scintillator like this one, or you could get, you know, a really, really good range Geiger Muller counter using several tubes, or you could get like a really good modern digital ionization chamber that puts everything else to shame, it all comes down to you know, the quality of the product. But there you go, that's that Soviet scintillator. Um, later on I would like to take this apart and see if I can actually get it running a bit more efficiently. But as I said, you know, it does work, just not very efficiently, because if I put that onto 7 and put the crystal there, as you can see, it does actually read it, it's just nowhere, nowhere near as efficient as it should be. Um, because, yeah, the idea of a scintillator is that, you know, you can pick gamma radiation up from quite a long way away. And as I said, the, how close I have to put that to the uh, autonite crystals and a little bit of torbonite in there, um, that is far, far closer than I, you know, have to normally do it with a Geiger-Muller counter. That gives you some idea, you know, when um, a GM counter picks it up from further away, you know, a scintillator's not working properly. Um, it'd be like, you know, if a standard family car was outrunning a sports car, you know, there's not something mechanically going on right with a sports car. But anyway, there you go, thanks to Hype and Vladimir for getting me a bit more info on this because I'm hopeless at trying to translate little labels using Google Translate to get the Cyrillic letters up to then find forum web pages that you can translate to find more info on it. But, yes, from what I figured out anyway, 7 is the highest setting on that one, 0 is the highest setting on that one to get the most sensitivity out of it, which is what you want if you're playing about with a scintillator. Um, and then in theory you could make it a lot less sensitive. But I don't think this was exactly a top of the line scintillator anyway. Apparently the Soviets did come up with a much nicer one later on. Um, but yeah, this one is a very cool little thing. I got off Etsy, I think it was about 70 or 80 pounds of the postage included from Belarus, which wasn't bad at all. Because sometimes, you know, people want like 200 or pounds for these sort of things. Although saying that, this one didn't come with a crate or any of the accessories, you know, because I have seen some pictures online where they come with all the gear as well. A bit, you know, like DP5 kits or whatever. This didn't, but as I said, I'm pretty happy with it because it does function even if it's not very sensitive. And it's a cool bit of history, which is what I like collecting, really. So there you go.